Hey everyone, what's up? Dr. Charlie PT here. Just shot a video actually inside of my um, Facebook group. All right, back butt sciatica DIY diagnostic network. If you are interested in, uh, you know, just interacting with me a little bit more closely, then feel free to uh, check the link above. You can uh, get access to that. Uh, that being said, uh, shared a little bit of a nugget. I think a really super sharp nugget. All right, again, I'm a little biased uh, as it relates to trying to improve your ability to get back to driving. Of course, while I'm driving today on Mother's Day. 2023 here as we shoot this video um, and so it sparked my thought about this so um, as you'll see in the video lots of people just think about driving as this physical problem it must be the seat it must be this it must be that I need a new car right but you also need to think about something else so in this video I'm gonna share with you something super savvy something a little bit ninja and something that nobody thinks about and or nobody talks about and so what happens is because people don't know this thing, they just keep trying to drive further. Well, maybe next time uh, I'll go from five minutes to 10 minutes or, you know, like they just keep banging their head against a wall, wondering why driving is so darn hard to get back to and to get back to pain-free and or more comfortably. So something to consider, you're not gonna wanna miss this variable and you're not gonna wanna kind of not think about this thing. All right, so let's check it out. And by the way, sorry for the video quality. I think it's a little up and down because I was doing this Facebook Live. And by the way, my hand's bouncing all over the place. All right, enjoy. Let me know your thoughts. Um, just wanted to shoot a quick video because as usual, I had to switch seats with my wife because I had too many thoughts on my brain. So I wanted to share this, okay? So um, chatted with a woman the other day who um, had trouble driving, right? So she had a lot of pain driving, uh, meaning she could drive for only like five maybe ten minutes and then what it would do is it would set her back days and so something you want to think about is if you have trouble driving chances are you also have trouble sitting probably right And if you think about it physically you're in the same position right so you're sitting like this right when you're maybe on a chair right and you're sitting like this when you're in the car so it's not so much of the difference in physical body position that sometimes make driving more difficult than sitting Again, they're probably both pretty yucky. But something you want to consider, and one variable that's often not thought of, is the fact that driving is often a place where you feel more just like mentally and emotionally trapped. And this is interesting, right? So some people would say, hey, well, if I can't sit, then I can't drive. And that's often true. But there's this little unthought of variable which is this idea of when you're sitting, 95% of the time, you can just get up and move. And so it hurts when you sit, but you're not trapped by sitting in the comfort of your own home, at a restaurant, right, things like that. Now, obviously, if you're at some ceremony, a wedding, a funeral, something like that, then maybe it's a little awkward to get up. But either way, you could figure it out, right? You're not trapped. And so that gives us a little bit of like a mental, psychological escape from the pain. We know that we can get up. We know that we can get out of pain. And if sitting starts to hurt, we can just get up and walk around, right? And so there's an out here. There's an out. And then also physically, there's an out. But when you're driving, you can't just get up, right? It's not as easy, right? I just pulled over to look at this house that was for sale on the side of the road. And I had to like go up, you know, an extra minute to pull around, to turn around, to make sure I didn't get hit, to then drive back and whatever. And, and you can't just always pull over if you're stuck in traffic because you live in Los Angeles or somewhere where there's like 12 lanes, right? Then you can't just, uh, you can't just pull over, all right? And so what this leads to is this feeling of being trapped. And again, you're trapped physically, but you're also trapped mentally. So what that does is it increases the fear increases the catastrophization, which is this focus on, and this, oh my gosh, like, when's the next exit, right? You ever have to take a pee when you're driving? <laughs> Daddy said a potty word. Daddy said a potty word. <laughs> you ever have to take a pee when you're driving, right? You're like, oh my gosh, where's the next exit? Can we pull over? Tell them that you gotta pull over, right? Like, um, yeah, and you're looking up, you know, on your, on your GPS for the next, you know, restroom or whatever, all right? And so that's the idea is like, it just fuels the attention and the focus on the symptoms when you're driving. And so 
sometimes why driving is really get difficult to get back to is because people are putting putting themselves in this really threatened state, not only physically and mentally, right, because of the position, right, that's painful and problematic and causes issues, um, but also because of um, the kind of psychological, emotional, and mental trap that being confined in a space and traveling down the road and not being able to just get out can cause or can place on us, all right? And again, this fuels it because it freaks you out more, all right? It freaks you out more. And so rather than just, you know, if you're having a lot of trouble driving for more than, I don't know, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever, it doesn't really matter. If you're having trouble driving and you're not able to drive like you want, then you need to start in a more safe place, a more safe space, which would be sitting. And sitting maybe in a place that you really enjoy too. Think about the context of sitting, the environment in which you can practice increasing your tolerance to sitting. If we know that pain is an experience of both the brain and the body, primarily the brain, brain's the CEO, um, then you need to consider both. You need to consider not only practicing just sitting, but not just sitting anywhere, right? Sitting maybe in a space that is the least threatening. Maybe it's out by your water feature. Or maybe it is, um, I don't know, in your art studio. Probably not in your office, right? Your work office, right? If work is stressful. And so something to think about, all right, is consider not only the environment in which you're sitting and how it might psychologically affect you and increase fear and or increase safety or increase threat or increase a feeling of, hey, I'm okay, but obviously also thinking about the position. But oftentimes there's more than just the position involved in causing people's pain, especially when you see that, hey, people can maybe sit decently, maybe not perfect, but they can sit decently, but then driving's a real problem. Well, the only real difference, you could argue maybe your legs are kind of in different positions, but the only real difference is that you're trapped in one and you have freedom to move in the other, all right? Something to think about, just a little bit of a nugget. Again, don't start in the, in the most dangerous, threatening position of driving. Get good at feeling good sitting, not in your car, not trapped, in your living room, watching something you like, with your family, around good food, in your covered porch, outdoors on your deck, in your art studio, wherever it is that makes you feel most happy, most at peace, if you want to put it like that, and um, just best overall. And then as you build up time, then you start to practice transitioning that tolerance for sitting into driving, into the car. Maybe you just sit in the car and you practice it. Hi. Hey. <laughs> Goofball. Uh, my dad takes care of sciatica, back pain, and knee pain. Yeah, sciatica, back pain, and knee pain. You so, do, don't doubt I, it. I do, baby. Anyway, um, and so maybe it's just sitting in your car at a nice park, right? Then maybe it's just taking a drive around a very familiar place versus taking a drive on the interstate. That's more threatening for a lot of people, right? More stressful. Something to think about. Again, not only considering the position of driving, because that's what people want to do. They just want to change the car seat. Now I need a new car because this car is terrible. It may be that you just feel trapped and psychologically it's not a safe environment for you. So consider the implications of not only the body, but also the brain if you're having trouble sitting and or specifically driving. Maybe driving is too threatening. You got to start somewhere else. Hope. All right. So hopefully that was useful and just made you think about um, something different. Think about your trouble sitting and or driving in a little bit of a different light. Maybe something that you hadn't thought about before. All right. So you not only need to consider the physical and or structural implications of, uh, you know, what it might mean and or why it might be uh, problematic to sit and or then drive. Uh, but also the psychological, um, you know, reasons behind pain and uh, how it shows up for you when you're feeling trapped on a windy back road.
All right. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Also, if you want access to uh, a free resource, a DIY diagnostic guide, basically uh, something I've created and put a lot of effort into to help you understand the uh, most likely cause of your back button sciatica problems, be sure to click the link above, check that out, download it, work through it. Don't just skip through it because you think you have this or that, right? Actually go through it. If you spend the time doing it, um, you know, I promise you that you will uh, get really close to what's going on, all right, and the most likely source of your symptoms, all right? So let me know your thoughts below. Thanks so much for checking out this video.